Welcome back. In the last video, I got the engine taken out of the car and put on the stand. Now it's time to tear everything down and figure out how bad the damage really is. I won't be talking too much in this video, it'll be mostly me taking stuff off the engine, but I'll add some commentary here and there. So, let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is start draining the oil. Yeah, I'd say there's metal fragments in there. A lot of shiny flakes. And I cracked. Jeez. It's a very gummed up PCE system. Let's see how easy the engine turns over with no plugs in it. It should be pretty nice. Yeah, it feels pretty good. So now I'm going to set it so that it is not on top dead center. So now none of the pistons are at top dead center.
Hmm. That was easy. That was replaced a few years ago. Because the original one split in half, and then the belt tore itself through the timing cover and such. No hex lobes on these crank sh on these camshafts. Ow! That's not a good idea. Still on there. Do not use an impact on these. Head gasket looks fine. There's nothing obviously wrong on any of the cylinders. Some have a little bit more carbon buildup than the others. Uh, I don't really know if that's signifying anything really, but. There's no cracks in the top anyways. I think most of the time the ring lands fail between the first and second rings, I think. So, past this ridge. So, we'll see what it looks like. Head gaskets are fine. I had no symptoms of a blown head gasket, so that's good. Yeah, we got some metal fragments in there. So 
since I'm seeing a couple metal fragments in this, that means I can't reuse it because it's hard to clean. That also means I gotta cough up like 300 bucks. What a miracle my motor didn't blow. I guess we'll see what the bearings look like. Pretty dirty. Okay, I've got the engine block on the bench. These flywheel nuts are really tight, so I made up my own quick little uh, bracket here for holding the flywheel in place. Put, get them with my impact, so I gotta use this uh, big breaker bar. Well, that's a leaking rear main seal, huh? Gosh. I think. Ugh. Something easy for once. Bloop. Piss and pin. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh my god. Check this out. <laughs> wow. I am so surprised this motor didn't catastrophically fail. These were all in place too, they were just sitting there, in the piston. I just dislodged them.
These bearings look great. These bearings all look really good. There's just the slightest amount of wear in them, but they all look, but they're all quite even, which is which is good. Perhaps the rod bearings will be a different story, but the crank journals all look good. No scoring or anything like that. So I'm gonna pop the rods off and see how those are. So the rod bearings were actually the same story, they were just about perfect. So at this point the teardown was complete so I moved on to doing some inspection of the parts. First put a bore gauge on the cylinders and measured the taper and the out of round. Everything was within a thousandth of an inch which is quite good actually. Then I measured up the size of the crankshaft journals too. The largest difference I could measure here was a ten thousandth of an inch which is perfect. Took some photos of the valves to see how the seats looked, and then measured how much they moved back and forth. There was quite a bit of play here, so probably my valve guides are worn. The exhaust valve seats didn't look too good, so I checked the valve lash. These measured a couple thousandths under the limit. That's because the seat wears out and the valve overall moves closer to the camshaft. I checked the flatness of the cylinder head and the block, and there was no detectable warp in either. So really, where I'm at here is, the engine is overall in very good condition. Visually, it didn't look great, it had a lot of dark varnish buildup, which is kind of weird because I was doing regular oil changes. So I'm not really sure what's going on there. But the only damage was that cracked ringland. The cylinder heads are definitely going to need a whole refresh. But as far as everything else, I'll replace those pistons, do new bearings, and it's not looking like it's going to be a huge overhaul. Of course, I will be bringing all these parts in the machine shop to get some things taken care of just to be safe. Also, I will be shooting for more power, because why wouldn't I? As always, thanks for watching, feel free to like and subscribe, and stay tuned for the next part where I start building the motor.